All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Badass Podcast. Today, I have another interview for you guys, and these are some of my favorite episodes because I love sharing what works for other women, their stories, and all, all the good things that they've been up to. So today, I have Jennifer with me. And me and Jennifer met about six months ago, maybe, online. Yeah. Um, uh, she, we, we found each other connected and have just been killing it ever since. So I'm going to read a brief bio on Jennifer before we get into it. And then I'm going to have Jennifer just kind of take the reins and tell us her story. So Jennifer lives in Northwest Nebraska. She is married and actually she's been married for nine years this week. She's a mom, wife, has two wonderful children, Xander and Emerson, which I love those names. Um, She's an elementary teacher, special education teacher, in a small rural school, which I know a little bit about that school. (laughs) (laughs) And she just started her 21st year this fall. So Jennifer, welcome. I have been looking forward to this for like the past month, and we finally made it happen. (laughs) Emily, so, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your story. Who are you? What do you do? Well, you kind of gave the bio intro, so that is about myself. So, um, I guess my story would be: I did find you about six months ago. Um, that was kind of like rock bottom, I would say for me, but I had been struggling, I guess, ever since um, I had kids, I would say. I, and I, it, it feels bad to say since I had kids, because I don't want to blame it on having kids, but after I had kids, I kind of lost my place. I kind of lost who I was. I put everything into them. I put myself on the back burner. I didn't take the best care of myself. Um, I wasn't doing my hobbies anymore. Um, I wasn't doing things for myself, with my friends, with my husband. I did everything for them. So over time, I slowly lost myself and I really felt lost. And so last spring, um, oh, I guess in April or so, um, I was really, really having a hard time. Um, I was having, I mean, I've been struggling with anxiety for a while, um, but it really, really hit rock bottom for me. And I was feeling super angry, frustrated, feeling alone, um, crying a lot. I was overwhelmed and I would just have tons of to-do lists and I was busy all the time. I think just trying to cover up things and um, I was taking things out on other people. I was waking up late. I was eating whatever I wanted. I feel like I was trying to make everyone else happy but myself. And then one day I saw a post from you on Facebook And I don't, it just really struck me. I remember it saying something about, um, do you want help or do you desire, I don't know, something about um, decision fatigue, I think. I don't know if that's what you said. I don't know. I I talk about decision fatigue a lot. So yeah, it could have been that. And it really struck a chord with me. And I don't know what in the world, because I usually, I'm very shy and I don't really, it wouldn't have been my normal thing to reach out to someone like that on Facebook, but I did. And so thank goodness, because I don't even know, I just feel like I was kind of at such a really rough spot. And so that's kind of my story, um, like kind of what has brought me from last spring up into, well, I guess that's where I was, I guess I should say. So, and to meeting you and kind of the struggles, I guess I was having. Yeah. So what do you think's changed in your life in the last 
you know, five or six months? Well, um, well, I got a coach, which would be you. (laughs) And um, you've taught me a lot of things that have helped change those things. You know, before this and before reaching out to you, I really didn't know that there was really help. I mean, I have seen a therapist before and they are helpful, but I feel like you have given me steps to act um, put into place in my life and work on things that are actually helping me. So, okay. What was the question again? I kind of feel like, no, you're fine. So no, that's perfect. So, um, I, I don't want people to think that like you found me and it was this magic pill because you actually did no. work. You took actual action steps. Okay. So kind of, kind of tell us, fill us in on what challenges you faced after meeting me because they're still challenges. They're just a little bit different. Right. So the challenges I was having was, um, I was having a lot of, oh gosh, a lot of negative self-talk, like all the time throughout the day, saying negative self-talk types of things to myself. Um, So I was struggling with that. I was struggling with um, like perfectionism and wanting to keep my house really clean and um, what else? Uh, Trying to... Um, I guess I was like had to do this forever. Like I felt like I needed to keep busy all the time and it was just too much. It was running me into the ground, you know? Um, and so I guess things that I started to put into place were, um, journaling. Um, I started to journal and, that has really helped me. Um, I started to meditate, which has helped me a lot as well. Um, It's just, it's been like you start to work on something and you peel back layers and then it seems like you find more things that you need. (laughs) Um, Yes, exactly. It's the onion. It's the onion. Yeah. As soon as you peel back one layer, you got another layer and we're just peeling back the layers till we get to the core. The core, Jennifer. So you talk a little bit about this anxiety, right? And I know Mm -hmm. that a lot of women struggle with anxiety. So my question for you is, what were you so anxious about before? And I know that, you know, this is something that you still work on, but it's not nearly, Uh, um, at least in my perspective, it's not nearly like it was before. So kind of give us an idea of what, what anxiety looked like in your life. Are you still there? Yes. Okay. Um, before, um, it felt like like a rock in my stomach. And just, I think, to try and cover up, I w- would make myself super, vi- super busy and, um, like, to-do list, to-do list, and everything like that. And... Um, I wanted everything to look perfect. I wanted to be perfect. And that's, that's not a true picture. That's not, I'm not perfect. And by putting some of these things in place, um, okay, so like the morning routine for me, it's been a huge game changer. So getting up at five o'clock in the morning and doing things to help me throughout the day to set my day up has been huge for me. Um, Walk so, us through that. What is your what is your morning routine? Because I know a lot of people say, "Oh, I can't get up early. I don't have time for that." Or there's just excuse okay. after excuse, right? So how did you overcome Which those I'm, excuses? And what does your routine look like? We just still. I have to admit, is a little <laughs> bit of a struggle. I know I had you hold me accountable for a while, and you taught me the Mel Rock rule of five four three two one get up you know and I've had to move my phone across the room and even now I'm 
I had a little setback and now I'm having someone hold me accountable to getting up because it is hard. It's not easy. It is hard. But you know what? I get up and one of the first things I do, I stretch. Um, I do affirmations. I, let's see, I meditate and I read whether it be my Bible or um, professional development book. And then usually on my way to work, I pray on my way to school. So that's what I do in the morning. And I feel like it has just helped my anxiety like tons. It has helped so much. So that is one of the things I've been doing. Um, The journaling, you know, by saying affirmations, but then again, writing them down in my journal. And then also um, setting some of my intentions for the day, you know, Um, talking about how I want my day to go or how I want things to look like and writing things down that I'm grateful for. These are all things that have helped. Um, I don't have that rock and pit in my stomach anymore. Um, It does come once in a while, and that's okay. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not perfect. It's still going to be there once in a while, but it's nowhere near like it was. Another thing that has helped, too, is walking. Walking for me is like medicine. I mean, it just, it helps so much to get... Um, when I'm just like, feel like I'm bouncing off the walls and, oh, I got all these thoughts in my head. I mean, even my husband will say, Jennifer, go for a walk, get out, go. So that really helps. Um, Also, you know, writing down all the things that I have in my head, sometimes my head is just so full. So just getting everything down, like journaling, just all these things, what you call a brain dump, but just writing all these things down and it just feels like if I can get everything out of my head and down on paper, Oh, that just feels like such a relief. So <laughs> it is these are things so. All, oh. so what so, do you think the biggest, what do you think the biggest challenge was for you to overcome this past year? Oh, God. Let me think biggest challenge. That's okay. Oh, I'd say, well, I feel like I'm, I'm still working on, because I haven't even taught, I haven't even touched on it yet, but still making time for myself. You know, making myself a priority, putting myself on the calendar, making sure that I make myself important throughout my week and doing things for me. Because otherwise I'm burnt out. I don't have time for my kids and my family and for my job. So that's been my biggest challenge. And I know how important it is. It's just such a challenge for me. So I I would say that's my biggest challenge still. Yeah. And so what have you done to kind of help you overcome that obstacle? Because you do a hell of a lot better than you used to. But what steps did you put in place to make sure that you're putting yourself on the calendar? Well, I still, I'm writing it down. I am trying to be more specific about it. I mean, before I was just saying, uh, I'd just say uh, me time or whatever. Now I'm trying to say, um, we'll listen to a podcast. Uh, We'll read for so many minutes. We'll go to yoga class. We'll, so I'm trying to be more specific about it. Um, We'll take a 30 minute walk. We'll, so it's more specific. So I think that that helps and not just be so general about it. I don't know if that makes sense, but. No, that makes uh, perfect sense. I think that that's a a great idea. Sometimes if we just put, you know, what you talk about the calendar and time management is huge. And if you don't actually schedule in that self care time or that me time, it doesn't happen. And so you've gone the next step as to make it specific where you're like, okay, instead of just wandering around the house trying to figure out what I want to do for my self-care, you're like, nope, I'm going to read right now, and then later I'm going to go for a walk. And that's perfect because it takes out what we talked about in the beginning, that decision fatigue where, you know, it's just like prepping meals. Like if you wait till the last minute to cook dinner, you're going to get so frustrated that you're going to order a pizza. 
you know, and just like self care. If you wait to the last minute, you're going to get so frustrated that you're going to waste all your time thinking about what you want to do instead of just actually doing it. True. Because sometimes if I just put me time, which I was doing, then I just go through the whole day and I'm like, mm, I never did it because I don't think I actually named what I was going to do. So I was really just putting it off and uh, yeah. And then I'd find the end of the week. I, I was like, oh, I didn't do anything. I feel horrible. I'm angry. And yeah, I was putting myself on the back burner and I can't, I can't do that anymore. So I can't pour into everybody else's cup without filling myself first. So yes, so. I think that's such a hard lesson for us women to learn is that we can't run on empty <laughs> and expect to have everybody else. Oh. oh, it's just, it's, it's, it was a hard lesson for me to learn too. Cause I always thought, you know, I have to be taking care of everybody else and that I was fine and come to find out when we, you know, fill your gas tank up first, you can go a lot farther. Right. 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 And I'm still, I'm, it's still a challenge. So, but I, it's work. I, it's work. <laughs> And I'm like angry and frustrated. And then I'm like, Oh, I didn't do it. I didn't spend time for myself. So I know. So let's talk so. about that because now you can recognize that. And I would call that a win in itself. Whereas before, you know, in my personal experience, oh. I would just, I would just spiral and I'd be angry and I'd be pissed and I'd be like, God, it's everybody else's fault. They didn't do this and they didn't do that. But now you have that self-awareness. So talk about that a little bit. Um, I feel like before I was just, I had no idea. Like I was just so angry and overwhelmed and mad and frustrated and all sorts of, I don't know. I just felt out of control. Now I feel like by putting into practice every day, these things that help, I feel like I'm way more in tune with how I feel so, um, like some days, I mean, the one day I was driving to work and I was like, oh, I just felt terrible and frustrated and I don't even know why. And I, I was like, this isn't how I want to feel. So what can I do to change this? Because I'm not going to go this whole day and feel like this. So what am I going to do to change this? So I just feel like I'm way more in tune with how I'm feeling. And, you know, or even when I come home, I don't want to feel like that with my family when I come home from work. So I try to do things to change how I'm feeling. So talk about I'm, that a little bit. We've, we've talked about the ripple effect. Um, several right. times on, on how, how your, how your energy affects those around you. And I know you have yeah. some stories. So, so tell us. Well, <laughs> um, I just know that I am trying to something that you have said that sticks to me so much is about staying in my, I know like staying in my own lane for me, has helped so much about, okay, being with myself and with positive people. So I'm trying not to be around negative people that kind of suck the negative energy from me or are sending bad vibes to me because that just ripples onto me. And then, oh, it just, you know, even when I'm working, I don't, I don't want that around my students or in my classroom. And when I come home, I don't want that for my family. So um, I'm just trying to stay away from all of that because I don't, I just, I don't have a place for that in my life. So I'm just trying to stay away from those kinds of people. So um, energy and empire, whatever we call them. So um, it's, it is hard though. Um, to do that sometimes, especially when they're coming to you and you're like, whoa, <laughs> back up, stay away from me. <laughs> so, but their negative energy can just like literally make you feel horrible. So 
but I'm working very hard on not being around those kinds of people. Yes. So what's coming up next for you? What are you working on? Well, I am, like I said, I talked about me. I just still feel like I really need to be working on making sure I'm putting up myself on the calendar and working on that. I'm also um, working on my money story. I've always had some bad thoughts about money, you know, that money is bad. Um, we don't. I don't have enough money, blah, blah, blah. So I'm working on that, changing my language about money. So I'm working on that. Um, I'm reading some good books right now. I, I feel like I'm trying to read three or four at a time and it's not working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I need to pick one and stick with it. So that and just I really I don't I guess I don't have like a, a lot of like big things coming up it's just all these things I want to work on and just boundaries with people I I don't know I always want to just help people so much but then sometimes I want to fix things for other people and that's not my job so I'm trying to really make sure that I'm staying in my own, again, my own lane and my boundaries, you know, that it's not my deal to try and fix other people's issues and those kinds of things. Saying no to things that sometimes I say yes to things I don't need to be doing and those types of things. So, Which can be super hard because I hear you, you want to help them all and you can't help those that don't want to help themselves and you can't fix everybody. It's up to them to fix yeah. themselves. All you can do is hold space and, and give them tools and, and yeah, set, yeah. Your, set your boundaries. <laughs> I've always been a people pleaser, so I've kind of had to change my thoughts about it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's true. You know, just be there for them, yep, and say some things, but not jump in and try to fix everything for them, so... Right, because what's the just, lesson in there if you fix it for them, right? Um, I know exactly, and in my personal experience, and maybe yeah. you can speak on this too, but if somebody's going to do it for me, by all means, I'll let you do the work because I'm not going to do it. Right. But if I have to do it myself right. and I have to go through that, you bet your sweet ass I'm right. going to learn that and apply it, right? Right, right. it's true. It's very true. And it's even working with kids at in my job. I mean, I've never, you know, when you're teaching them things, it's in the students that I work with, they do have a lot of um, family issues and different things going on. And so it's hard for me, but I have to give them the tools so that they can go and try and fix things for themselves. So I have to create boundaries and so it's something I'm working hard on, not just with adults, but with the students I work with too. So it is something I'm really trying to work on. So, yes. So any up upcoming adventures, you talk a little bit about some of the themes that are coming up, but any, any big scary things that you're working on or plan on doing? Yeah. I'm not quite sure, but I do, I do keep trying to lean into things that are scary and try to push myself. I mean, I try, I keep having things that pop into my head and I'm like, Ooh, is that something I should be doing? Or so I don't know really what it is yet, but I'm wondering like what is coming up because I'm really trying to tune into that because before I would, I have been so much more open to things now I, than I was like six months ago. I would totally be like, no, mm -mm, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. And I'm trying to be, I'm like, oh, that's a little scary. That's okay. Maybe I could do that, you know? So I am much more open to things now, you know? Mm -hmm. So... Who knows? 
<laughs> I'm not done I playing or anything. <laughs> I mean, you would. <laughs> but skydiving is on know. my list of things to do. Well, I know it is for you, but not for me. I, Who knows? But, maybe I'll convince you to come with me. <laughs> no. We'll jump out of a plane. We'll jump out of a plane together. <laughs> Even like I know like you love to ride horses. Like that scares me, but I should try to do that, you know? Hell yeah. Like, hey, hey, I know somebody that gives lessons. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I'm much more open to trying things, you know? Heck yeah. Yeah. I hear you. So you got to lean I, into that fear. That's how you build the confidence. That's how you build the courage. That's how you keep conquering yeah. these challenges as you lean into it. Yeah. So I keep trying to think, ooh, what? I tried to push myself. Like, what is something I could do? What's a little scary something I could do? Yeah. If it's not so scary, is I it even worth doing it, you know? Yeah. So I'm trying. Like, I don't have anything, like, really big in my head right now, but. That's okay. I'm trying to be open. So, so what's yeah, what's so your maybe, advice to women that are listening to this? Oh my gosh. If you I don't know. If you're like how I felt six months ago, if you're struggling at all, reach out to somebody. Find somebody that you can talk to or um a friend or find a coach or reach out to you. I know this I just find somebody like-minded people positive people there's there's hope there's things that you can do you do not have to stay feeling like how I did like frustrated and angry you don't have to stay like that there are things that you can do to help you change you don't have to stay like that so there is hope there is help there are people out there that can help you I love that I love it because I was too in the same boat. I thought that I was alone. I thought that I was crazy. I thought that I was the only person that felt this way and that that was just how life was. And the truth is, it's I not. Did. That is the, that is what I, I think back about it now. And it does make me feel sad because I did feel alone and like I was the only person feeling like that. And why couldn't I handle being a mom and being a teacher and um, all these things. And why couldn't I do all this? And why was I feeling like this? And it was just, I didn't know. I didn't even know there was someone like you that could help me. So I don't know. It was just there, there, there is help. So reach out to somebody so you don't have to continue to feel like this. You're not alone. You really aren't. So my last question, just because it's, I don't know, I'm, I like to know more about you and it's kind of morbid. So, <laughs> but if you had one week left to live, what would you do and oh. why? Oh my gosh. Well, I hope <laughs> I don't, but, oh. You know what? I would live it to the fullest. I'd be with my family and those I love. I just, I have two little kids, so I, I would play with them. I do as much as I can with them. I just love, love, love. I hope that I'm leaving a legacy for them. I <laughs> hear your daughter. <laughs> she, uh, I, I hide from. Okay, so this is just real life right now but um the only quiet place in our house when i do these interviews is actually in her room <laughs> so i come upstairs and i sit in her room because it's like away from everybody and then she knows that i'm up here so she always tries to escape will and if he's not looking she'll like take off running to the other side of the room and like climb the stairs and come in here and just laugh she just thinks it's so funny to interrupt mom <laughs> so i, I apologize <laughs> I just think that's adorable, her little laugh. That was so cute. She, like, peeked around the door and was like, ha, ha, ha. And the Will comes up and grabs her, so. Grabs her. Uh, no, it's fine. I just, hope but yes. I'm, I just hope I'm leaving a legacy for them. You know, I just want them to know how much that they can be and... I don't know, really, you know, when you think about this, this is really 
I know you're thinking about one week, but really this is how you should live every day, you know, set, set intentions every day. Like it's your last, I mean, put things, you know, I don't know how I'm trying to explain this. Like you need to set goals and do the things that you want to do. I mean, you only have one life to live. So you only get one time around. Well, make sure that you're doing things every day that are making you happy. You're, you're not wasting your life, you know, and putting goals, doing your bucket list, you know, I read a quote quote? somewhere that, um, Oh, what did it say? Your second your life begins when you realize you only have one. And I was like, yes. holy smokes, isn't this the truth? Like, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. I hear so many yeah. people that say, well, I'll do this when my kids get older. I'll wait till I'm in retirement. Or I'll wait till this. Or I'll wait till that. Yeah. Or, or there's not enough time. There's not enough energy. There's not enough money. And really, is this right. like, when is the perfect time? Right? When? Right. When is the perfect time? Because you can always say, oh, I'll do this Monday. I'll do this next week. I'll do this next month. I'll do this another time. And it never comes. Like now is the time. And I think you've harnessed that this year. You just, you, you, you get scared (laughs) and you do it anyways. Yes, I do. (laughs) I know you do. (laughs) I get terrified. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm always telling you that. Oh my gosh. But it's true. I think you really just, and I'm learning, like I was, I've always been so worried about the little things, everything, the little things, the little things. And you know, when you think about this, it doesn't matter. You know, I get so hung up on, and I, I still do. And I have to remind myself, but like, if I'm like, my house is a mess, there's Legos, there's laundry, there's dishes, there's, but you know what? Is it really, I mean, yeah, you got to do it, but is your family happy? Are your kids having fun? Are they learning? Are you, you know, it's, there's beauty in the mess of that, you know? So, Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know if yeah. that makes sense, but makes perfect sense. No, nope. I'm trying to find the beauty in that instead of going crazy about it. So <laughs> it's okay to I'm go trying. a little crazy every now and then, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Jennifer. I I love our conversations, yes. and I'm I'm glad to hear a little bit more of your story. You know, I. We've been talking for quite a while, but to get it from a different perspective, I really, I really enjoyed that. I feel like I know a little bit more of what goes on inside your head, and I'm sure the people listening to this probably feel the same, <laughs> but it's a good thing because you're just shedding light on what life is and what life could be, you know, or what life was and what life can be, because I think a lot of us yeah. had similar feelings to what you have, and we just feel stuck, and we feel alone, and well, this is just what right. has to be, and it's false. It's all just right. fear trying to keep us safe, right? And yeah. I love right. this conversation. I'm glad we finally got a chance to get it done. I know we had been trying no. for a couple I weeks, know. and I got kids in the background. It's thunderstorming, but we made it happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again, and thank you to everybody who tuned in today. If you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to subscribe to this podcast. That way you'll get notified on any future episodes and you won't miss a thing. Who knows? Maybe I'll be interviewing you in the future. So until next time, guys, go be a badass. Talk to you later.